Okay. 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 My hair's been in a different place because I've been out campaigning for animals a lot of the last few days. Um, and I have to mention it because it, it's in, in a way it's tied up with what's downstairs. Downstairs is a little cave of treasures, and probably some of you have seen it already. It's, it's got lots of stereo pictures from the 1850s, uh, which feature in the book that we've lost and found. They were called Scenes in Our Village. And they're a unique document of life in the 1850s. And it's a tiny village in Berkshire. And this document is in 3D, so when you see these pictures, you feel you could walk in and almost talk to these people, almost touch them, grab them by the hand. Um, they're not actors, they are real people from the 1850s. And with each card is a little poem which tells you what was in the photographer's mind when he was interacting with them. It's about a village, it's about the people in the village, and it's about their thoughts, their lives, their hopes, and their dreams. Very much like we have, um, but they're in a very different situation. It talks about their relationship with their animals, their relationship with each other, their relationship with their God, and with nature as they saw it. So to me it's been a fantastic journey into the way people perceived the universe in about 1850. Um, by a strange coincidence, I'm very much involved with farming now, and I seem to spend a lot of my time with farmers talking about the threat of bovine TB. And um, we've just arrived at the point where the, uh, the government have decided to make what I consider a tragic decision to try and solve the problem by killing thousands and thousands of animated badgers. So I have become a warrior. <coughs> I can't really do a public appearance now without speaking about this. We need to somehow, in my opinion, stop the government doing what they're doing. You know, they've chosen a very barbaric route instead of a route which is totally open to them, which is the vaccination of cows and badgers, because this disease resides in both populations. Uh, so over the next few years, if they get away with it, they will be slaughtering at least 70% of our native badgers. And one of them were you know, the, the badgers were here long before humans, and basically they mind their own business until we go out and start interfering with them. So, this links up in a way with the book, and I've been away from this book for a while. For a while. I spent probably 40 years collecting the pictures in this book. I've probably spent three years writing the book and restoring the photos. And then it's been out there, so I've kind of moved into a different area. But for me, it's nice to revisit. Um, I hope you'll enjoy seeing the, the pictures downstairs. And, uh, who's been down there? Okay, so, okay. Well, uh, please, the rest of you, please visit. Please go down and have a look. It's, um, it's a very suitable place. I'm very grateful to the, this place for having us. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you for the today. I'm really grateful to have this little exhibition space. It's really suitable. You go down there and you're kind of in a capsule just like the Victorians would have been in their parlours. And the, the, the stereoscopic, uh, the Victorian stereoscopic experience is a very intimate thing. It's not like going to see Avatar in a theatre with, with hundreds of people. You're kind of alone with your stereoscope for a moment. And you feel that you are in a virtual world. And it's a very perfect virtual world. Uh, if I can just te get technical for a minute. Um, the kind of 3D that you see in cinemas is brought about by uh, cross polaroids. It used to be done with red and green, now it's done with cross polaroids. And that's an attempt to try and make sure that one eye sees differently from the other eye. But it's not a perfect way of doing it. Your brain is always trying to filter out little bits of images which are getting there that shouldn't be. So after a while, you get a headache. Um, whereas with the Victorian stereoscopic method, it's a perfect separation. So you can really do it forever. You can, you can be in this world for as long as you like. Um, the man who created this particular set of um, photographs is called T.R. Williams, Thomas Richard Williams. Um, he was noted to be a very gentle man, a very modest man, and he made his money by photographing people. He was a portrait photographer and had a studio in Oxford Street and made a fortune, uh, the equivalent of a multi-millionaire uh, today. Um, but his real passion, it seems, was for doing things which 
which meant something to him in terms of what he was leaving the world. That's what I believe anyway. And this, this particular project, Scenes in Our Village, which you'll see downstairs, seems to have been a real lifetime passion for him. Um, when I started collecting the pictures, I had no idea who the guy was, what it was meant to be, and nobody could tell me. So along with a, a great photo historian called Elena Vidal, we researched him for about five, six years, um, and discovered that it seems very likely that the village is where he grew up as a child, even though he was born in Belgium. Um, and what he's doing in this series is trying to recapture his childhood, his kind of lost feelings as a child. And you'll see this in the verses. Um, and he's also trying to capture a way of life which he thinks is threatened. So it's very much in tune with today. You're looking at a way of life which he thinks is about to disappear, the country life. And he's trying to preserve it and show us the value in, in a simple country life. Um, the people that you see in pictures look kind of idyllic, you know, it looks very gentle and peaceful, but it was a hard life. These people were virtually slaves to their land. And um, so the life was simple, but it was also hard. They were brought face to face with the realities of not being able to eat in the winter, um, as well as you know, the normal trials of family life. Um, I think the rest of the pictures tell the story, you know, there's, there's so much to say, it's all in the book. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously I would recommend buying the book, it's a fabulous book. Um, but um, it, it is kind of a labour of love, the book. At the moment I'm working on another stereoscopic book, which is all about French devils, which is completely different. Um, why am I working on devilish works? Because I think it's very necessary to know the devil if you're going to know God. Um, that's my excuse. You know, and, uh, and that's maybe the attitude they had. These, these were French people. I'm not going to tell you too much about this because this is a surprise. But if you go on the website, you'll see it really. Um, this is 1860, and the French were very obsessed with death and what life might be in hell because they were being indoctrinated by these people telling them it was going to be, they would be boiled in pots when they died. So it starts off as a kind of glimpse of what hell should be like and it develops into something much more. It, it's a very, um, it's a very perceptive look and a, a sort of satirical look at what's going on in France at that time. So my head's been in French devils, it's been in badgers, but I'm happy to be back here um, looking at something very beautiful and peaceful. You know, I'm a, at heart, I'm a very peaceful person, and I love music, I love making music, I love making beautiful pictures and appreciating pictures, and this book is a way of challenging what I consider one of the world's great art treasures into the 21st century, in a way that we can enjoy it, just as the Victorians did. Um, I probably should now stop, because I could rattle on for ages. Um, those of you who want to know what I do from day to day, it's brianmay.com, and I put all kinds of stuff up there. There's all sorts of stuff up with that Dappy at the moment, which is really interesting. You know what you Dappy is? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids know who Dappy is, and he's, you know, I, I feel it's really the world. It's like a completely new musical area for me. And I'm preparing for, um, for a trip to Italy with Kerry and a, a wonderful Italian singer, and we're going to be in San Bruno Festival with a kind of um, a special arrangement that I've done of an old song called I Who Have Nothing. Mm -hmm. This is really, actually, I love revisiting things. I mean, I, I love revisiting Victorian England. I also love revisiting great works of art in my business. The, the, the lyrics for this song were written by Lieber and Stoller, who perhaps knew them in the introduction. They wrote a lot of stuff for Elvis and something. They, they are the pinnacle of, of that period's um, rock writing, if you like. So I've really enjoyed going in and arranging the material. So I do all kinds of stuff, but basically, I would like to come across to you guys as a human being who is searching for a way to bring everything together. I do astronomy, I do stereoscopy, I do music, occasionally. <laughs> and I do animals, you know. To me, maybe I can just say one more thing about animals, because you'll see this in T.L. Williams, and maybe that's partly why I love the guys so much. You see his appreciation for nature. You see an, an understanding, even from a man in the 1850s, that the human species is not the only species that matters on this planet. 
And to me, that's very important, and I think it has to change. You know, I feel a bit like Wilberforce in a way, you know, fighting impossible odds. Everyone was saying the world can't do without slavery. What would we do? How would our economies survive without slavery? At the moment, they're saying, how can we survive without abusing animals? Well, I say to you, we can't, and it has to change because before it's too late, we need to realize that every not every species, not only every species, but every single individual animal matters. We are animals. We have certain talents. We have a great talent in the world and concrete. And we have some good talents, I think, you know, but we have to learn to coexist with our fellow species, in my opinion, before it's too late. So forgive me for preaching, but I appreciate your help, and I know a lot of you have already helped us with this, you know. And if we can stop this bloody bloodthirsty government from doing what they're doing, from culling the badges, from bringing back to fox hunting, then I will die a happy man.